So, uh, if you remember that we learned about ocean currents in the beginning, so most of that what we learned before is basically uh, surface current. Uh, but we have also what we uh, what is known as a, a deep current circulations. But deep current circulation is different because uh, surface current is mostly driven by winds and also you know surface uh, geopotential gradient. But deep current is mostly driven by the difference in density, what we call as thermohaline circulation. So thermohaline circulation is basically a movement because of different density from one place to the other. So, but of course the difference is deep circulation is, is very slow. It, it moves, you know, it, it's so hard to measure. So scientists use TS diagram and water masses as the mediums to really understand how water are moving from one place to, to, to another. So in these topics, you will learn how deep current circulation moves and how we define them. So we look at TS diagram before, but we're going to look at TS diagram in a much uh, practical way by understanding water mass. Water mass is a body of water with a, a formation of uh, with the same formation history and uh, formation area. So what happened is in the ocean there is two area with uh, a large formation of water mass happen, which is in the Antarctic area and and the Arctic area. So water mass usually form when they sink and create uh, when water big amounts of water sink and create a uh, a new form of waters so that is what we call as water mass formations so this big formation of waters then will move uh, in the deeper oceans and then you know to understand this movement we cannot measure with our equipment because the movement is very slow so what we do is we define through uh, temperature and salinity diagram so for instance scientists uh, tends to uh, provide uh, certain types of name to these water masses, especially the most important ones. So it's similar to, to, to the current system. So you have big current system with, uh, you, know, you remember all these big names of currents and then there's also some small current system in the world. But uh, in this case, I show you uh, the major current uh, uh, water mass. So there's, this is the major water mass system in the world. So from here, you can see the characteristics are based on this uh, margin or this, uh, temperature range uh, and salinity range so for instance we have north atlantic uh, central water so nacw so this is the thumbprint you know sort of a thumbprint to characterize so if you uh, sub uh, i mean if you find any water within this range usually we know that this is come from uh, nacw so if it range between this range so it is from antarctic circumpolar current aacw so NADW for instance North Atlantic deep water this is the range so if you uh, get uh, data from the oceans and then you plot the data the TS diagram and then you figure out that those TS diagram falls within this range so it tells you that that is North Atlantic deep water so this is like like a thumbprint to those particular water mass in the world all right so TS diagram uh, when you plot temperature serenity you will tend to get you know many types or many shapes so for a very shallow water, usually you have a very simple shape like this. So you have uh, your plots falls within these lines and then you can define that usually you have uh, two types of water. And if you look at from the temperature and sanity profile, if you have this kind of curve, usually you have you know, two types of water, which is one uh, on the surface and one at the bottom. So this is what we usually have in, in the South China Sea or in the Bidong Island area where uh, if you go and collect your sample, so this is the types of TS diagram that you get. Uh, as you go deeper, uh, 100 meters or 200 meters, you can tend to get you know, two or three water masses. So in this case, when you plot temperature salinity with this kind of curve, so it tells you that you have one, two, and three water mass. All right. So I give you another example in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, this is four meter depth of, of ocean. So you have 4,000 meter depth. So you have this surface water, one characteristics, one water mass, and then you have this close uh, to AAIW or Antarctic intermediate waters water mass, and then you have NADW here, and you have AABW over here. So you have one, two, three, four water masses from those Antarctic Atlantic diagram. So again, I give you some example uh, in the Atlantic Ocean as well. So you can see in different. Um, different different area of the plots so you can see a lots of different uh, TS diagram 
so for instance this is in the south atlantic ocean so you plot so you get all these plots so this i think i believe that this is more than 1000 plots along this line so when you plot everything so you can see the characteristics of temperature and salinity so so if you do the average plot so you can tell you that basically you have one two three four types of water masses in those areas so i mean this is the sort of diagram that you will get when you have lots of data sets plots in one one place but in the end you can tell that it, it shows you a, a very uh, can show you some pattern of, of the ts diagram so this is for instance uh, some example from the south china sea so we we, we get some data from the south china sea uh, study so this is from 2004 2005 2006 so these ts always have some difference especially if you look at here this is uh, uh i'm not sure this is uh waters from one uh it's not such an acid but you can see how different those water from uh, i think this is kurosho warm waters outside of such an acid in, in the pacific so it's very different from the such an acid water so such an acid water you can see the range uh, quite uh, change a lot during season but as you go down here i think i believe this is more than like 500 meter depth so everything is the same most of the year so I mean, from TS again, we can tell lots of things about the characteristics of the water in those areas. Uh, this is Indian Ocean, so you have lots of uh, uh, different points in the Indian Ocean that they get. So you can read down here to give you some perspective. So for instance, if I take one example, the Somali current SC. So this is Somali current. So Somali current is quite unique. So probably they have one, two, three, four, five water masses in Somali current. And then if you look at another example, for instance, ASW, what, where is ASW? All right, so Arabian sea water. So you can see Arabian sea water goes here. So very uh, uh, high in terms of salinity, but also very warm. So we have one, two, three, maybe four water masses in the Arabian sea. So this temperature salinity tells you how much types of water that they have in those water columns in that particular area of the oceans. All right, so let's take one example. So I have one example here, very interesting example from Mediterranean water. So Mediterranean Sea is very, very unique. Uh, you know, it's very confined sea. At the same time, it have some interaction between uh, Mediterranean and Atlantic uh, ocean waters. So in this case, you have a uh, Mediterranean Sea. So to to determine the types of water mass that you have in the Mediterranean Sea is simple. So what you do is you, you make a line so all to to those uh, temperatures and uh, ts diagram so there you are so you have so usually on the surface you have this mix mixed waters all right so they doesn't go uh, along the isopycnal line so usually it goes uh, across isopycnal line so there's surface water and then the second types of water you have central water and then you have this intermediate water and then you have that the deep water and then you have that bottom water so this is usually how scientists define these types of water mass so usually you have surface central intermediate deep and bottom waters so that is uh, so you have one two three four five water masses in Mediterranean Sea so now let's have a look another example in the East Pacific Ocean so you have again surface waters uh, which is mostly uh, mixed uh, water, uh, usually mixed water. And then you have central water over here. And then you have intermediate waters, central intermediate waters, and then you have intermediate waters over here and you have deep water over here. So it, it depends. Some In some areas, scientists define it slightly differently, but the concept is still the same. So you have surface, central, intermediate, and deep waters. Uh, and certainly you get it. If you that area is very deep, more than maybe five thousand meter, usually you will have a bottom water. All right, uh, I give you another example. Uh, this is in a much uh, a different area, which is much confined area in, in our areas of South China Sea. So just imagine this is not only Malaysia South China Sea. This involves the huge area of South China Sea uh, up to the north in in China. 
So you have all these very different types of water characteristics. So the deep water, permanent thermocline water. So all of these usually defined by scientists. So to make it simple for them to understand what types of water happens to be there at certain particular period of the time in the year or where it comes from. So uh, like I tell you earlier, in a big ocean, you have a big uh, uh, water masses. But in the smaller ocean, you have you know smaller water masses with a range much confined to compare to the to the big ocean i give you for, uh, one example a very interesting example in South China Sea, Sulu Sea and Celebrity so for you we don't understand uh, we don't really know where is Celebrity so this is Su uh, of course this is Sabah and then you have South China Sea here Sulu Sea here and Celebrity Sea over here so this data were collected by uh, our scientists i think in 2009 10 years ago the data is, is very interesting uh, so if you look at here, we characterize three different uh, TS. So we have celibacy in the red, the blue one is Sulusi, and the, uh, uh, sorry, which one is uh, Sulusi is the blue one, South China Sea is the green one, right? Higher temperature in celibacy, slightly lower uh, uh, in the uh, Sulusi, and you get, you know, much lower uh, temperature in the uh, such in the sea, especially in the uh, Sabah area. And as you, as you go down, you can see this is uh, uh, some characteristic, they name it as NPTW, North Pacific Tropical Water, with very high salinity uh, waters. So you can see North Pacific Tropical Waters also in South China Sea here, so a spike of, of high salinity waters, but you don't see those water in Sulu Sea. So the Sulu Sea just go down straight like this all right so they don't have the spike of high salinity waters so why so because they don't have this NPTW NPTW comes from the Pacific bringing uh, a very uh, warm uh, sorry a very high salinity waters but Sulu Sea if you look at over here Sulu Sea don't actually have uh, uh, it, it's very confined so if I show you uh, Sabah in Sabah area if you look at in bigger scale uh, water from Pacific comes through a Luzon Strait and then it moves partly in, into the Pacific uh, in the South China Sea celibacy of, of course is connected to Pacific Ocean but not Sulu Sea Sulu Sea is very confined it's like a bowl so it's it's very confined it, it's covered by this uh, land seal or sand seal over here and over here so it, it it is very shallow over here so it stops water from coming in to those areas so I mean that's one of the uh, interesting uh, things that we understand about the movement on transport of waters. So not every waters can can be transported in 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 certain area. Uh, in this case, in Sulu Sea, you don't get waters from Pacific moving into those uh, sea system. Again, one example from the Argo floats. I'm gonna give you some example of Argo float. What is Argo float? Argo floats is a a device that is designed uh, and being deployed. All over the world there's about 6,000 algo floats floating in the oceans now and then they transmit all the information using satellite so some of those algo floats are here in, in our area so we plot those data and then we get almost similar kind of data set so if you look at here Sulu Sea there's no salinity spike so they just go straight because there is no influence of Pacific waters over there so but you can see those waters from celibacy which is higher spike because they get direct water from the Pacific and such as sea you get uh, a modified water as you go into the northern part of South China Sea to the southern part of South China Sea and again so this is one interesting work actually being done by uh, Dr. Hidayah in one of her uh, PhD thesis so we have you know, different types of water masses along the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia so you can look at this range so uh, I, I don't want to go through details but you can see this range is not as huge as the big ocean uh, water mass characteristics is is very very uh, close i mean the characteristics so it's so hard to define but it gives us some understanding on how this actually influenced by you know, seasonal changes you know some influence of a big river discharge system you know like for instance we have mekong uh, water mass so which influenced mostly by the Mekong River outputs 
so so there's lots of other types of adjustment so in this case you can see to make it simpler we we plot the range straight away into those diagram so you can tell so this water is wm3 this water is mekong water so this is like the intermediate waters straight away from the from the box that we made all right so that's all for temperature 70 diagram so i hope you understand what we're talking about uh, especially on understanding of the water masses and how the temperature sanity can define those water masses i have this uh, youtube uh, uh, not my video but you can uh, access to the video to give you some perspective on algo floats so this is me holding an, uh, an examples of algo floats so again this algo floats is has changed uh, the way we understand our ocean dramatically for the past 10 years so i think lots of countries have um, contribute a lot so in algo floats so there are now about 60 almost 6000 types of floats all in all over the, the global oceans so and it can be accessed freely it's freely available the data set so you can just extract the data and and uh, use the data to understand our ocean so uh, to get more information about the algo floats so you can go to uh, the websites over here